Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride, back again with another video, and today I'm super excited to share with you my June setup in my bullet journal. I have wanted to do a pride theme in my bullet journal for so many years, and I'm finally going for it. Today's video is kindly sponsored by Skillshare. I'll talk about them more at the end of the video, but for now, let's jump right in to the setup. This is actually the final theme that I'm setting up in my current bullet journal. We've come right to the end. I can't believe we're already halfway through 2021. This year has been a very strange one, and it's only going to get weirder for me from here on out. So wish me luck. I'm starting by adding all of the paint I'm going to use for these setups onto my palette. This is a porcelain palette. I really like this one. This palette, along with all the paints I'm using, all the other supplies I'm using in this video will be linked in the description box down below. So if you're looking for anything in particular, they are all linked and listed down there. These colors are a mix of watercolor and gouache by Winsor & Newton, just depending on what colors I had available in my collection. Because Toronto is currently still in a full lockdown, I was unable to go to the art store to pick up some more supplies, so I just had to make it work with what I had on hand. So of course for a pride theme, my mind went immediately to the rainbow and I wanted to incorporate not only the colors of the rainbow, but the rainbow motif into this theme in multiple ways. So starting on the cover page, I decided to do sort of the classic rainbow. And on the left page here, I'm adding just little stripes of color and you'll see this come together in the end. It's something I've seen done a couple times paired with more abstract rainbow art. I interpret it as an abstract representation of rain to go along with the rainbow. And I also kind of like that it ties in with my April theme, which was an abstract rain theme from a couple months back. I'm using small squared off brushes for this just to get the cleanest lines possible. I found that this made the process a lot faster and easier than if I'd gone with a more rounded brush. As you can see, I make a couple mistakes here where I start from the wrong spot. So I was happy to have my Art Journal of Acrylograph in white nearby to use to fix those mistakes as they came up. Just make sure the paint layer is fully dry before going on top of it with your Acrylograph and then wait for the Acrylograph to fully dry before starting to paint again. I'm working my way through the colors of the rainbow here, doing my best to keep things as uniform as possible. Of course, I'm doing it by hand, so there's always going to be some variation. It's not going to be perfect, but I am doing my best to keep things nice and evenly spaced. I did want to take a little bit of time to share some pride facts with you because y'all have really enjoyed hearing facts in my videos. I've really enjoyed sharing them. And for pride specifically, I feel like it's so important when talking about pride, when celebrating it, to remember the history and to share that educational aspect. Pride began as a march in 1970, a year after the Stonewall riots in 1969. The Stonewall Inn Rebellion was a reaction by LGBTQ plus patrons of the Stonewall Inn to unjust police raids and violent harassment. That night in the inn led to four days of rioting and birthed the LGBTQIA plus rights movement as we know it today. Marsha P. Johnson, a black trans woman, activist, and predominant drag queen of the era, was a central figure of the Stonewall Uprising of 1969. Johnson, alongside her good friend Sylvia Rivera, emerged from the riots as a leader in the growing gay liberation movement. She helped found the organization STAR, which offered housing to homeless and transgender youth. Sometimes referred to as the Mother of Pride, Brenda Howard was a bisexual woman who helped organize the Christopher Street Liberation Day March in 1970 to commemorate the Stonewall Riots. This first march was more protest than celebration. Over time, these marches evolved into the pride parades we know today, which are far more celebratory in nature, but continue to hold on to their roots as protests and political activism. Pride Month highlights issues important to LGBTQIA people and gives advocates a chance to rally supporters. The hardest color for me to do here was the purple because I actually don't own any purple paint. So I had to mix this color from scratch and it's not exactly the shade I was going for because I just literally did not have the colors I needed to make the shade that I wanted, but I did my best and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Once I finished the rainbow and my little rain stripes on the left, I'm adding the header at the top. So I'm using a yellow acrylograph from Archer and Olive with the finer nib, the 0.7 millimeter nib, and just writing June across the top and attaching it to either side of the page. 
I was initially planning on leaving my spread like this, but once I finished it, I just felt that it was missing something. And I honestly went through a bit of a <laughs> crisis over it because I did pretty much exactly what I'd planned, but it just didn't look right. So I actually flipped to the next page and started cutting all of my tabs for my weeklies. And then I just took the night to think about it because I felt really stumped about how I could add things to the spread or alter things to be happy with how it turned out. This is something that I hear from a lot of you in comments or DMs where you are having trouble making what you're imagining translate on the page in a way that you're happy with. I feel like there's this perception that those of us who make plan with me videos or post our work on the internet or have a bit more of a following that we are always happy with what we make from the first try or that we know exactly what we want to do and then perfectly execute it. And it's just not true. I feel like it's important to bring attention to that and make it very clear that no matter how long you've been bullet journaling and I've been bullet journaling for going on seven years at this point, I still make spreads that I don't like. I still struggle to translate what I'm envisioning in my head to the page all the time. Almost every time I make a spread, there's something about it that doesn't turn out the way I expected or the way I thought I wanted. And that's totally normal and totally fine. So I just wanted to make sure to include that here because that's the reality. And I don't want the polished nature of my videos to give anyone the wrong impression or make anyone feel bad in any way. The next day when I came back and had an idea for how to turn things around, I forgot to turn my camera on. I was so excited. You can be a YouTuber for many years and still, still make rookie mistakes. Anyway, so what I decided to do was add plants <laughs> because there's a spread coming up at the end of this where I had planned on incorporating some green leaves into the image. And I really liked how that looked in my head and thought, you know what, maybe that is what this page needs. And that can also kind of tie the cover page in with this later art at the end of the setup. So that's what I decided to go for. And what I actually did, which might be a helpful tip for anyone who's in the same boat, kind of struggling with figuring out what they can add or change change to be happy with the spread. I took a picture of the spread on my phone and opened it in the mobile Procreate app. And then I just tried different things. I literally tried so many different things throughout the course of the night, sitting on the couch with my husband, watching a TV show. I tried adding stars. I tried changing the color of the header. I tried adding green leaves in different ways, in different places, in different configurations, and ended up coming up with what I'm creating here. I highly recommend that if you are kind of feeling lost, stop, take a step back, take a breather, and then take a picture and try different things digitally to see what they're going to look like with what you've already created and use that as a way to find something that you can be happy with. I'm using the leaves just to fill in some of the empty space near the bottom of the spread that was kind of bothering me. As much as I love negative space, it just felt a little too empty. So I used these plants to fill in those spaces and just to make it feel a little more lively. And then I also used my yellow acrylograph that I used for the header to add some dots in some of that negative space in the upper portion of the spread. It's not super noticeable because it is a lighter color and the dots are quite small, especially on camera, but I just felt like it helped to tie everything together, fill in some of that negative space, and also kind of gave a bit of a celebratory air to the spread. It almost looks like confetti, which I felt fit well into a pride theme. I also added one more little green rectangle in this upper left-hand corner where I felt like there was just too much negative space. My eye kept catching on that spot. Once I'm happy with my cover page, I'm flipping over to the next spread, which is going to be my calendar and a quote page leading into my weekly spreads. So I'm adding a bunch of washi tape here. Starting with the lower left-hand corner, I'm adding brown as the first diagonal stripe. And then I'm also using brown to start my quote page. Once the brown layer was dry, I moved my washi tape over and added a rusty red diagonal stripe. I also added a rusty red stripe to the quote page. Once that layer was dry, I moved on to the orange layer, again, creating another diagonal stripe on the calendar page and writing is on my quote page. I also went over my rusty red stripe one more time just to make it a little darker and a little more obvious that it is red and not orange because it turned out a little lighter than I wanted once it was dry. 
Moving on to the yellow stripe, I also wanted my weekly tabs to follow the colors of the rainbow, starting with red and then orange, yellow, green, and blue. A little trick that I love to do is using the little strips of paper that are left from the center pages of my weeklies as a backdrop to paint the tabs. They're the perfect size to just slot in there, and they're pieces that I would be recycling anyway. Once I finish painting those first three tabs, I'm going back to my calendar page and working on the green stripe and writing love again. As you can see now, my quote page says love is love with two stripes to look like the equal symbol for equality. For a little bit of Canadian history inserted here, since I am Canadian, the bathhouse raids of 1981 are considered Toronto's equivalent to the Stonewall riots, and they involved over 300 men being arrested and subjected to excessive force and taunts by police. Most of those arrested were found innocent of charges, and public outcry against police brutality and the violation of civil liberties grew over the following days. The raids marked a turning point for Toronto's gay community, who were no longer willing to endure the derogatory treatment from police, media, and the public. I've included a link in the description with a timeline of the history of Pride across Canada for anyone who's interested in learning more for all my Canadians out there. I found it really interesting to read, so it's there in the description along with all of the other references for the information I'm sharing today. Now that everything's had time to dry, I'm removing my washi tape, and this is just potentially the most satisfying thing about painting in my bullet journal, removing the washi tape and seeing a nice crisp line. Now you can kind of see what I was going for for the calendar page here of having these diagonal stripes with some negative space for the actual calendar. And I'm adding the header here, which I initially planned on just making yellow like the cover page, but I decided to change my mind and create a bit of a gradient effect. So starting with yellow and then mixing some custom colors to gradually transition from yellow to green and then green through teal to blue through purple for a little moment and then back to blue and connecting it on either side to the frame. I'm really happy with how this turned out, but it definitely took a long time, so beware that if you're thinking of recreating it. I'm adding the calendar itself, keeping it nice and simple with just horizontal lines so that it won't be too visually busy, and fixing any little spots where paint might have bled underneath the washi tape with my white acrylograph. I also decided I wanted to add some hearts to my quote page just to incorporate the last couple colors of the Progress Pride flag, including black at the top and blue and purple at the bottom. Flipping over to my first weekly, I am using my rolling weekly spread as always. And as always, I'll include the link to my video that is dedicated to explaining how rolling weeklies work, how you can set them up both in the version I'm using here, the two spread faux Dutch door version, and also a single spread, just two pages version. So check out that video linked in the card and in the description box down below if you have never seen the rolling weekly spread and you wanna learn more. And now flipping to the final two page spread, I'm creating a couple more rainbows because of course, <laughs> so starting with my brown again. And for the first couple stripes on this left page, they're going to be very similar to the cover page, though I have shifted everything up just a little bit. I'm also creating a cute little mini rainbow on the right side. For this rainbow, I'm using a finer tipped rounded brush since I don't have any squared off brushes small enough. Again, I'm doing my best to keep these generally uniform with even spacing, but it's not gonna be perfect and that's okay. That's also kind of the charm of it, that it's handmade and a little wonky, just like all of us. We're all just a little wonky, right? <laughs> I know I am anyway. <laughs> Again, I'm relying on my white acrylograph to fix a little mistake here because apparently I can't count. <laughs> As for the rainbow flag itself, every color in the original rainbow flag designed by Gilbert Baker in 1978 has its own meaning. Hot pink for sexuality, red for life, orange for healing, yellow for sunlight, green for nature, turquoise for magic and art, indigo for serenity and harmony, and violet for spirit. The flag has changed many times throughout the years. 
first in 1979 to make the flag easier and more affordable to print on fabric, and again in 2017, when black and brown stripes were added to recognize and represent LGBTQIA people of color. The flag shifted again in 2018, when designer Daniel Kazar created an updated flag incorporating both the brown and black stripes, as well as the white, pink, and blue stripes of the trans flag into his Progress Pride flag. There are also individual flags for every identity and orientation under the LGBTQIA plus umbrella. Check out the links included in the references portion of the description box to see examples of these flags. I'd love to hear more facts about Pride in the comments or experiences you've had attending Pride in your area, so let's share some love for Pride Month in the comments of this video. Once I finished my first three stripes, I'm grabbing my circle template and painting a yellow sun right under the top arch portion of this rainbow. And of course, adding a yellow stripe to my mini rainbow on the right. Now I'm grabbing the same circle from my circle template again, moving it down a little bit and just painting a half circle with the blue. Yes, I know I'm skipping green, but as you'll see, green will still be incorporated. Don't you worry. I also decided to use a piece of washi tape just to get a nice clean straight line at the top of this semicircle. Once that was dry, I removed the washi tape for yet another super satisfying moment, <laughs> and I used a smaller circle from my circle template to create a tiny little purple dot at the bottom. Now I'm proving to you that I did not, in fact, forget green, and I'm adding some plants kind of growing from the bottom of this piece of art. This, again, is what inspired adding some plants to the cover page, and repeating this motif allows me to tie the first spread and the final spread together. I decided to create two smaller branches on the left side and one taller or larger branch on the right, just for a little bit of asymmetry since this piece of art is so symmetrical and so even. I wanted these to add in that feeling of natural asymmetry or variation. Once I finished those, I'm going to my mini rainbow and adding the final few stripes, green, then blue, then purple. And this was pretty late at night by the time I got to this point, so I apologize for the strong shadows on the page. I was so engrossed in painting that I didn't even notice how dark it got outside, so I forgot to adjust my lights. And then to finish off this final page, I'm using my black Secura Micron to write so proud under the mini rainbow. So that brings us to the end of this setup. But before I show you the final flip through of all the spreads, I want to take a moment to talk to you about today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people like you and me. With classes in a variety of topics like illustration, productivity, fine art, and film and video, there are endless possibilities to learn new skills, explore existing passions, and connect to your creativity. I'm currently taking On Marwin's Sketchbook Practice Back to Basics Watercolor Fundamentals. As a self-taught artist, I am always learning, and no matter how advanced your skills may be, a return to the fundamentals is always beneficial. I loved Wynn's approach of experimentation and exploration of her materials, especially when looking at the different types of paper. I I really wish I had taken this class at the very beginning of my watercolor journey. Because Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, there are no ads. And with new premium classes launching all of the time, there are limitless opportunities to learn to do something new with the support of a strong community. Because Skillshare has sponsored this video, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get 30% off an annual premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Even if you've already had a free trial of Skillshare, you can still take advantage of this offer to get a full year of unlimited learning and creative exploration. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And now it's time for the final flip through. So here are all of the spreads that I created in this video for my bullet journal in June. I was so worried about how this was going to turn out after I took a break creating the cover page and just felt kind of lost and unsure if my vision was going to come to fruition. But honestly, in finishing 
doing it. I'm so happy that I just went for it and persevered. I really like these spreads. I love how bright it is and happy it is, how much it makes me feel like going out in the sunshine and being part of a pride parade, which unfortunately I'm not going to be able to do this year again, like last year. If you liked this setup, please give this video a like. It helps me out in the algorithm and subscribe if you haven't already. If you've made it all the way to the end of this video, leave a rainbow emoji in the comments below so I know you're a real one. And before I go, I want to take a quick second to thank my Patreon for their support. Extra special thanks to our newest patrons, Brandy, Aaron, and Rebecca. Welcome all of you to the squad. We are so excited to have you. If you at home want to join the squad, feel free. There's a link in the card and in the description box down below. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you really soon in my next one. Bye, friends.